Hello students, welcome to Easy Limu Learning Simplified. I am your teacher, Mr. Stanley Mbogo. And remember, it is a privilege to uh, always have you on the show. So uh, in this session, dear students, uh, allow me to take you through the last episode of uh, Checkmate Analysis. And uh, remember, the author is Kevin uh, Baldeo Singh. So uh, what we are going to do in this episode is uh, basically to look at the language and the style that the author as employed in this uh, literary masterpiece. So talking about language uh, and styles, uh, dear students, uh, allow me to talk about the first, that is imagery. So uh, the first question is, what is uh, imagery or what is your understanding on uh, this stylistic device? So imagery is a literary device uh, that is used in poetry, novels, or any other writing that uses a vivid description that appeals to a reader's senses to create an image or idea in their head. So uh, through language imagery does not only paint a picture, but aims to portray the sensational and emotional experience within the text. So uh, under imagery, uh, remember imagery uh, has got uh, some other subcategories. So uh, under imagery, we are going to look at vivid description. We are going to look at uh, personification. And I think we also have got uh, uh, symbolism. Now, uh, first things first, let us look at a vivid description that is under imagery. So remember when you talk about vivid description, personification, uh, uh, you know, uh, symbolism, uh, uh, simil, metaphor, et cetera, those are all uh, subcategories of uh, imagery because uh, they are styles that has something to do with, uh, you know, uh, an, an image or idea that is created in the mind. So uh, talking about vivid description, this is the use of a descriptive language uh, to create vivid imagery of the setting and characters that we have uh, in the story. So uh, in the story, uh, there are examples of, uh, you know, a vivid description, uh, such as the description of uh, Randall's office. So Randall's office is described as a huge and light and airy with large rectangular plate glass windows set deep into the wall. So uh, apart from that, remember at the bank, um, we are told that uh, th there were two lines. There were uh, th there was that that is the ordinary, uh, the ordinary queue for uh, ordinary customers, and there was uh, the special queue for uh, you know uh, clients or customers with uh, platinum uh, uh, credit cards. So uh, at the ordinary, uh, uh, that is uh, the, the the queue, the queue for ordinary customers. There is a man that is described to be in a green khaki shirt and black trousers. So uh, we also told that he stood with his brown leather shoes just touching red tape on the polished uh, marble floor. So if you look at that style that the author has employed, uh, we uh, we can uh, in a way create that that image of whatever is being uh, described or the setting of the scene and appear as if we are there and witnessing whatever is being described. So uh, on to the next, uh, dear students, that is personification. So uh, remember, personification is when an idea or, ani uh, or animal is given human characteristics. That is, uh, we give human qualities to uh, the inanimate, inanimate things. For example, uh, you know, stone running away from, uh, from, from someone or from you so that you don't pick it. So in that case, we have given a stone uh, the qualities or the characteristics of humans. So in the story, uh, uh, that is uh, in the conversation that uh, Sophia is having with Randall, that is in his office, uh, we are told that uh, the shimmer from the giant windows seemed to become stronger as though the light had begun to uh, to vibrate. So if you look at, uh, that is uh, um, whatever is being described here, the idea or the thing here is light. And uh, when we are saying that uh, uh, it had be begun to vibrate, then it is as if uh, the light that is being described is now given some characteristics that uh, belong to humans. So uh, still uh, under imagery, we have got metaphor. So remember, metaphor is a comparison of two things, uh, that is that uh, uh, two things that are unlike without using the words like or as. So again, uh, we are told that at the bank when uh, Sukia was nervous, so it is said that she felt as though her stomach was a cold, uh, tight ball. So the use of the phrase uh, uh, that is a cold, tight ball, uh, that is to uh, to compare 
the state of nervousness and again uh, whatever uh, Sukia was feeling in uh, the stomach. So it, it talks about two things that are unlike but are having uh, some similar some similar characteristics in a way. Then uh, let's move to uh, symbolism. So uh, what is symbolism? So symbolism, dear students, is a literary device that uses symbols, uh, be they words, people, marks, locations, or even abstract ideas to represent something beyond the literal uh, meaning. So uh, the concept of symbolism is not confined uh, to works of uh, literature alone. So uh, symbols inhabit every corner of our daily life. So uh, in the story, Sukia's pen being used by Randall to forge his signature uh, symbolizes the manipulation and control that Randall uh, has over her. So remember one of the uh, you know character traits of, of Randall that we discussed when we were looking at uh, character portrayals uh, was that uh, Randall uh, was said to be uh, uh, that is uh, domineering, uh, meaning that uh, we see some uh, you know some aspects of, uh, of chauvinism that is male chauvinism in him as he tends to uh, always uh, control who control uh, that is control and manipulate uh, Sukia. So uh, let's look at the next uh, style that is a uh, foreshadow. So uh, foreshadow uh, in simple terms is a literary device that is used uh, to give an indication or hint of what is to come later in the story. So uh, foreshadowing is useful for creating suspense, a feeling of unease, a sense of curiosity or a mark that things may not be as they as they seem. So uh, in the story again, uh, that is uh, in the conversation that uh, Sukia and Randall are having, that is inside uh, Randall's office, Randall uh, addresses uh, Sukia by telling her that I think there is going to be a worldwide financial crisis before the year is finished. So here is a case where uh, the year has not yet come to an end, but there is a feeling that uh, at the end of the year, the company, uh, not, not, not just the company, but uh, uh, that is the world, will have a financial crisis. So it is something that has not yet happened, but uh, through their conversation, we get, uh, you know, an indication or a hint that uh, when the year ends, then uh, probably uh, people will, uh, uh, you know, uh, experience uh, a worldwide financial uh, crisis. So let's talk about the next style, uh, dear students, that is irony. So uh, irony can be defined, uh, it is a literary device uh, that uh, describes or talks about a situation in which there is a contrast between expectation and uh, reality. So uh, it is ironic, uh, that is uh, looking at uh, basing our reasons and uh, facts on the story, uh, that is the, the, the short story, uh, Checkmate. It is ironic that Randall uses Sukia's pen to forge his signature, but ultimately uh, the forged signatures are used uh, as evidence against, against him. So that is uh, one element of irony uh, that we are able to identify from the story that is a uh, checkmate. So uh, let's look at, uh, let's have a look at the last, that is the last uh, stylistic device. That is a suspense. So uh, in literature, suspense is an uneasy feeling that a reader gets when they don't know what is going to happen next. So uh, a writer creates suspense through a controlled release of information to readers that raises key questions and makes readers eager but terrified to find out what happens. So uh, Sukia's mounting uh, suspicions and discovery of the forgeries build tension leading up to her confrontation with Randall. So, you know, up to this point, dear students, we ain't really sure uh, the next uh, the next things that are going to, uh, that is the next uh, series of events that we have. So all we, all we know is that uh, Sukia has already discovered, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the discrepancies. But again, uh, who is going to checkmate who? That is uh, as the title of the as the title of the story suggests. So uh, thank you for watching, dear students. And again, thank you for keeping it easy, Elimu. Until next time, once again, I'm your teacher, Mr. Stanley Ombogo. Bye.